So guys, I actually used to be a magician and my lats were so small that I actually had trouble pulling the rabbit out of the hat. Okay, okay, that's a bit of a lie. However, there were a lot of mistakes that I made and I want to share those mistakes with you so you can help to grow your own lats. So without further ado, let's get started. Mistake number one is allowing your shoulders to roll forward. And the reason that we don't want this to happen is because it really just puts a little bit more pressure on our shoulders and it doesn't actually work our lats anymore. And the reason why it doesn't work your lats anymore, if you put even put your hands here while you're doing it, do it with me and roll your shoulders forward. Your hands actually come down just by rolling your shoulders forward and there's absolutely nothing happening at the shoulder joint per se, the glenoid humeral joint. There's nothing happening there. You're not pulling down any further. You're just rolling your scapula forward slightly and that's allowing you to get more movement. Placing pressure where you're not even aiming to place pressure, not necessarily gonna be a bad thing, but there's, there's no real point in it and you're not actually going to be growing your lats anymore by doing this. So mistake number two is having too wide of a grip. A semi-wide or a mid-range grip, even a slightly narrower grip are all gonna be fine. Now, we do not know for sure which grip, the width of your grip is better in terms of building lat muscles. There have been multiple studies that show it doesn't particularly matter what grip you do. However, if you go too wide, you're limiting your range of movement. You can't actually get your, your elbows down far enough by your sides. And that's actually gonna limit the amount of contraction that you can get in your latissimus dorsi, your lats. Mistake number three is pulling too low. So somewhat similar to mistake number one, if we pull low, 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 as low as we can, we're also gonna end up being limited somewhat by our triceps because the lower we go, you can see that the pressure starts to come on my triceps. So if I pull down, down, down to here, it starts to become a, a tricep movement, more pressure on the elbow. You cannot lift as much this way. So you're going to be, you're, you're basically limiting how much you can stress your lats by choosing a weight that's light enough that you can actually get down that low. So just come down below your chin or even just to your collarbones here and that's enough. Now mistake number four, and it's kind of a two part mistake, is staying like dead upright, just staying dead upright and also trying to have this perfect form where you're somewhat like a robot. There's no point in this. So if we actually lean back a little bit and do our pulls, we're still using our lats because our lats work all the way back until you hit zero degrees or 180 degrees. Once your, once your elbow starts going past here, your lats don't really work anymore. So if we lean back a little bit, our lats are still gonna be in use and it's actually a more natural position to be in. You're not taking away the use of your lats. Now, keep this in mind, if we lean back too far, still going to be okay if we have a, a narrower grip because we're still pulling we're still leaning back even when you're doing your your seated rows pulling like this you're using your lats from here to here that's fine however if you've got a really wide grip as i said earlier and you're leaning right back your elbows come up and then you're starting to work these upper these upper back muscles the likes of your higher mid traps and your and your upper traps those types of muscles and it starts to leave out the lower lat muscles once your arms are up here combined with you leaning back so it's the combination of the two that causes a problem in terms of activating the lats now if you lean back too far at the beginning of the pull you're not actually going to be activating your lats to move the bar you're just going to be using your lower back to pull the bar back not going to be bad for your lower back but you're wasting part of the range of movement that could have otherwise been used by your lats. So to summarize that, you don't need to have this perfect form. You come up into a straightened position, you lean back a little bit, back and forward in that motion. And again, don't have your grip too wide because that takes away the resistance placed against your lats. Number five, going behind the head. This, as I mentioned before, like pull-ups behind the head, for example, can in some cases be beneficial, but in most cases, it's not going to be. The risk reward ratio is quite poor. If you've got great shoulder mobility, it's not really gonna be a problem, but there is no point in doing it because it doesn't work your lats anymore. If you're a behind the head athlete or if you're an overhead athlete that requires extra shoulder mobility under duress or under stress, it may be worth exploring. If you're just trying to grow your lats, there is no point in doing this. Now, number six is not anchoring your, your knees properly. Not gonna be the end of the world if there's a little bit of movement, but it's one of those things that you can, I suppose, add to your repertoire or your arsenal of form tweaks that are gonna help you just get that little bit more out of the exercise. 
And the reason being is because when we anchor ourselves in, there is less energy lost elsewhere. If you're coming up and down slightly, especially if the weight is quite heavy, and your body is moving up and down, your knees are moving up and down slightly, it's gonna take some of the focus away from the pressure that can be put through your lats because there's gonna be some level of instability created. So try and anchor yourself in nicely. And number seven, as with any exercise, is not controlling the eccentric portion of the lift. So when your hands are going up, eccentric muscle lengthening, so not controlling the up portion of your lift. And we know from the literature that the eccentric portion of the lift is important when it comes to building muscle. We know that if we allow a couple of seconds as opposed to just flying straight up and down, that that is gonna lend itself towards you building more muscle. A couple of seconds is fine. So you're just coming up about this speed. It doesn't have to be four, three, two, one. Just control the motion. Now guys, do smash the like button down below. Also subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy the channel, go check out some of my videos. I'll leave a couple up here for you to check out as well. And until next time, goodbye and good luck.